coming out of Okay. Move back about a quarter of an inch. Move back. More. We just made a transfer of some liquid helium out of a storage tank into our own experimental equipment. Helium is a remarkable substance. It has two different and easily distinguishable liquid phases, a warmer and a colder one. The warmer phase is called liquid helium-1 and the colder phase liquid helium-2. The two phases are separated by a transition temperature known as the lambda point. When liquid helium is cooled down through the lambda point, a transition from helium-1 to helium-2 is clearly visible. We will show it to you later in this film. The two liquids behave nothing like any other known liquids, although it could be said that helium-1, the warmer phase, approximates the behavior of common liquids. But it is helium-2, the colder phase, which is truly different. Because of this, it is called the superfluid. The temperatures involved when working with liquid helium are quite low. Helium boils at 4.2 degrees Kelvin under conditions of atmospheric pressure. And the lambda point lies at roughly 2.2 degrees. Note that this corresponds to minus 269 and minus 271 degrees centigrade. The properties of liquid helium that I've just been telling you about are characteristic of the heavy isotope of helium, helium-4. The element occurs in the form of two stable isotope, isotopes. The second and lighter one, helium-3, is very rare. Its abundance is only about one part out of 10 million. Pure liquid helium-3 is the subject of intensive study at the present time, but so far no second superfluid liquid phase has been found to exist for helium-3. The low temperatures at which we'll be working call for well-insulated containers. The doer meets our requirement. 
The word doer is the scientific name given to a double-walled vessel with the space between the walls evacuated. When these doers are made of glass, the surface of this inner space is usually silvered to cut down heat transfer by radiation. However, our doers will have to be transparent so that we can look at what's going on inside. Now, liquid helium is commonly stored in double doers. The design is quite simple. Just put one inside the other, like this. In the inner doer, we put the liquid helium. And in the space between the inner and outer doer, we maintain a supply of liquid air. Here is a double doer, exactly like the one we will be using in our demonstration experiments. The inner doer is filled with liquid helium. The outer doer contains liquid air. The normal boiling temperature of liquid air is about 80 degrees Kelvin, 75 or more degrees hotter than the liquid helium. The purpose of the liquid air is twofold. First, we put the liquid air in the outer doer well ahead of putting liquid helium in the inner doer. In this way, the inner doer is pre-cooled. Secondly, we maintain a supply of liquid air in the outer doer because it provides an additional mantle of insulation now that the liquid helium is in the inner doer. The boiling of the liquid air attests to the fact that it is absorbing some of the heat which entered the double doer. Even with the boiling of the liquid air, the liquid helium is clearly visible. Later, we will use liquid air cooled below its boiling temperature to reduce or eliminate the air bubbles for better visibility. Now the liquid air is cooled down and we have eliminated boiling. The smaller bubbles of the boiling liquid helium are clearly visible. The cover over the inner door has a port at present open. The liquid helium is at atmospheric pressure, so its temperature is 4.2 degrees Kelvin. In other words, what we have in here now is liquid helium-1, the warmer of the two phases. Before we cool it down to take a look at the superfluid phase, I want to dwell briefly on the properties of helium-1. I've told you before that even helium-1 is different from the normal liquids. The distance between neighboring atoms in this liquid is quite large. The atoms are not as closely packed as in the classical liquids. The reason for this is quantum mechanical. The zero-point energy is relatively more important here than in any other liquid. As a consequence, liquid helium has a very low mass density, only about 13% the density of water, and a very low optical density. The index of refraction is quite close to one. This makes its surface hard to see with the naked eye under ordinary lighting conditions. You are no doubt familiar with the fact that the helium atom has closed shell atomic structure. This explains why helium is a chemically inert element. It also accounts for the fact that the force of attraction between neighboring helium atoms, the so-called van der Waals force is small. It takes little energy to pull two helium atoms apart, as for example, in evaporation. This gives liquid helium a very small latent heat of vaporization. Only five calories are needed to evaporate one gram. Compare this with water, where evaporation requires between five and 600 calories per gram. The low van der Waals force combined with a large zero-point energy also account for the fact that liquid helium does not freeze, cannot be solidified at ordinary pressures, no matter how far we cool it. However, liquid helium has been solidified at high pressure. <laughs>